We like to educate people, uh, educate people about fishing, which is why we're here. Uh, we enjoy this kind of thing, and hopefully you guys have an enjoyable evening. Okay, uh, first off, let's get Adam Bacon. Can you stand up for a minute? He doesn't know I'm doing this, so. This is Adam. He is a Shields employee. Adam has never been to Lake Winnipeg until last year. There's Adam. After his, what, his second day on the lake, his third day on the lake? That is a 12 pound something. Beautiful fish. So you all got a chance if he can do it. Yep. <laughs> Adam can catch him. Everybody here can catch him. That's the reason why we go up there. The quest for a master angler. And a master angler, in case you're wondering, is 28 inches long. Lake Winnipeg. One thing, and a lot of you guys have probably heard this before, if you guys in back, if you can't hear us, wave your hands because we want everybody to hear what's going on. So if you can't hear any time during the presentation, let us know, please. Lake Winnipeg is a huge lake. And you've heard for a long time the adage that it takes a big lake to grow big fish. This is definitely true. This is one of, it's the 11th largest lake in the world, 250 miles long. It is a monster lake. And that's one of the reasons why it has monster fish in it. That's why we like going there. Like I said, we go up there to catch, catch these big fish. And there's lots of them up there. How many of you have never been to Lake Winnipeg? Okay, for all of you guys, I can guarantee you that if you go up there, you take that group, 50% of you will catch the largest fish of your life. Guaranteed. Some of you will catch it numerous times on that trip. That's why we go. To catch fish like these, and everybody does it. Most everybody does it. There is that odd chance that you'll go up there and you won't do very well. But the next time you go, you might catch four masters. That's just the way it works. Okay, Lake Winnipeg, like I said, it's a huge lake. Most of where our fishing is going to be right down in here. That's where you want to be on the south basin. The two major rivers that flow into Winnipeg are on the south end of the lake, and that's what draws all those big fish down in the wintertime. If you don't have a passport, get one, because you're going to want it want to use it after the end of tonight. <laughs> barbless hooks, two things on this slide are very important. Barbless hooks, if you have a lure tied up, if you got a lure tied up to your rod and you're on the lake, it better be barbless. Whether you plan on using that rod or not, if you get checked with by a conservation officer, you will get a ticket. If it's in your tackle box, you're fine. But if it's tied on a rod, make sure the barbs have been pinched down. Well, I, nobody I've talked to has had problems losing fish with the barbs pinched down, so it's, it's not an issue. Make sure they're pinched all the way. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. you can, what a lot of guys do is take their pliers, pinch it, and kind of rotate back and forth. Not just crimp it, but kind of rub it back and forth so you almost rub them off. It's real important. And we'll get into a little bit more on the technique side, ways that that'll help you keep those fish if you're worried about losing a fish because of a barbless hook. There's no way around it. You're, you're going to have a barbless hook no matter what. So you got to increase your odds to make sure those fish don't come off. And there are ways to do that. No alcohol is allowed on the ice. There are a lot of people that do it. A lot of your buddies will probably do it, bring a bottle or whatever. What? If you get caught, you're going to get in trouble. So my recommendation is do it at your own risk. It is illegal. Fish location. 
for those of you guys that are married to your that really like waypoints, how many of you guys like waypoints? I like waypoints. If you like waypoints, don't go to Lake Winnipeg. Waypoints aren't going to do you any good. Because those fish, if they were there yesterday, they're not going to be there tomorrow. They're not there today. And that's because there's very little structure. There is some structure out there, but very little. And that's why we use waypoints. Those are the Minnesota fishermen. We use waypoints on structure because there's something holding those fish there. These fish are migrating. They're roaming around. They're not going to be there because you put a waypoint there. They're not going to be there the next day just waiting for you. They're going to be moving. One thing that's really important, we talked about it a little bit earlier, water clarity. Uh, one, of, one of the questions was, well, we probably want to fish by the mouth of the rift. Yes, you do. Problem with that is water clarity. As we all know, the rift is very dirty, and those fish aren't going to hang out in that super dirty water. So you've got to find that area where there's you have that water clarity, that seam, the mud line, so to speak. If you can find that and get on the edge of that, you can do very well at times. But that's the type of structure that is on Lake Winnipeg, things like that. Things like current breaks, if there's some current, things like water clarity, that's Lake Winnipeg structure. Okay, this is the south tip. Here's the mouth. That, that dirty water, depending on the time of year, you know, that dirty water could be all the way out in here. You know, that two miles out from the mouth. So you don't know where it is. In two miles, if you're going to drill a hole every 50 yards until you find it, you're going to be tired with four and a half feet of ice. So make, when you move, make big moves until you find areas where you want to fish, then you can make smaller moves after that. But, you know, don't, don't be afraid to move a half a mile. Drill some more holes. Access spots, Chalet Beach, if you're coming in from the west. Matlock, there's two or three different access spots in here, depending on ice conditions and everything else. Some of these conditions, you know, Chalet Beach is usually pretty good, but depending on snow and ice, you might not be able to get on there. So you, you got to have a backup plan. Over here, Patricia Beach, Stony Point, Balsam Harbor, Road 104. I think Balsam Harbor is 101. Road 101. 103, right here is another one you can get on. But if you're going to come here, from here to here is about 16 miles. So depending on. Yeah, not the straight line. So depending on where you're getting on at. You know, one of the guys said, well, I want to fish by the mouth, so I'm just going to drive him. No, you're, you're, there's no place to access anywhere in here. Except there is a, I think there is, well, there is one. Prudent Creek. Prudent Creek. Prudent Creek. Um, and Broken Head comes through here. Broken Head River. Depending on the time of year. Access is difficult, can be difficult. These fish don't come, aren't, don't necessarily come cheap because it's a lot of work to get up there. It's a lot of work to drive to the access, unload all your stuff, drive 10 miles to get out to your fishing spot. You know, from the time you leave the casino, I mean, the casino is five miles from the lake. From the time you leave the casino until you get to your fishing spot, it could be two hours. And two hours in the evening to get, to get back. So you got to be prepared for that. It's a lot of work. It's not like you're going to drive out to a heated fish house, fish for eight hours and drive back. <laughs> but as you saw in those pictures, the work is worth it. You know, there's no place in the world except for maybe Lake Erie where you can have this kind of fishing. And Lake Erie has many other challenges. Mobility. You want to move and move and move. Keep moving. And if you can hire somebody to run an auger for you, that's better yet. <laughs> Portable gear, extremely important. Portable houses, you know, if you go up in March, hopefully you don't need a house, but never say never. 
you'll see this a lot. You don't see it around here because people are afraid they're going to fall in. But you know, there's we got these cracks here. Some of these cracks will open up. They'll be a foot wide. That structure on Lake Winnipeg. There's a lot of people that fish pressure ridges. They fish cracks, especially the bigger ones. When when you see a big pressure ridge pop up, there's probably a big piece going down too. Which if there's current through that area, which there is by the red, that ice pushing down into the underneath the ice is going to create eddies and stuff. So which will attract bait fish, which will attract big fish. Anything, anytime there's a change, any type of a change in the lake, in the ice, that will attract fish. Narrow your search. If you get, you want to get information before you go, there's a lot of places to get information. Uh, internet, Facebook, friends, other people. There's a lot of people going up there. There's always fresh information as to approximately what areas to go to. Move, move, move. Use very aggressive techniques, loud techniques. You know, they'll talk about light targets, things like that. And vary your cadence because the fish are very big. They can be very active, and they'll inhale a bait that that, that that big, and you won't even see it in its mouth. It'll swallow it so fast, and it'll feel like a freight train hit your rod. But there's other times where you got to do something really, really small to get them to bite. There's still walleyes. There's days where they are extremely inactive, and sometimes that's when the small stuff works. Just holding your, holding your bait there so it's not moving. Bring them in with one rod and have another one just sitting there, and they'll hit the other one. So you can't just run around all the time ripping these live targets. You know, you'll take a lot of What he's really hitting on is don't be afraid to try the extremes. Very right. slow, very fast, and everything in between. And work with the guys in your group to try to target what those fish are wanting. And pay attention. Pay attention to the weather. It's the same thing if it's a cold front. They're going to be more lethargic. You know, so use your normal. Everybody, everybody in this room is a smart fisherman. Use those smarts to your advantage. 